Hello, this is Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H. from ColorJoy.com and I am currently working, this is the fifth video of a series where I'm actually teaching a class on video, basically, on how to do the crystal socklet from Nitty.com, which came out in March of 2012. Uh, this, uh, the first video, we did the square uh, that started the, the toe, and then we did a video on how to pick up those stitches, and we increased for the swirl toe, and then we did a, a video, which I'm very proud of, on doing color work and working with color work and uh, all sorts of different hints and tips for that. Now what I've done is I have knit until I am ready to place a, a heel, to put a place where the heel will go in later. That's what's called the afterthought heel. Now. In my pattern, it actually tells you how many inches to knit from the bottom of the, or from the beginning of the toe to where you are. However, it also gives you a measurement of what, what the anticipated heel length will be. And so if you want it to be a different length than I specified, by all means, follow your own uh, body size and, and ignore what I say if it doesn't work for you. I, I've gotten this so that it will fit me and I have a couple, uh, plastic feet here to do a little demo. This particular, let's see, let's first talk. This is the bottom of the foot, the way I have things set up. Uh, there are four sections, all equal sized, uh, but this top needle, which is the top or the instep of the foot, I have divided in two sections by a marker rather than making them on separate needles. Some of you also might be doing uh, other techniques such as uh, magic loop or a, a two, two circular needles. So what I have now is this is the way it will look on my foot. But in order to try it on, it's going to do better if I actually just make it kind of upside down for the sake of trying on. Now here is my foot uh, mannequin, which actually is about the size of my small foot. And I make sure that it's, it's snugged up to the toe here and I come down, I don't try to, I don't want to s stretch it too far, but I want it to, s to be fit snugly as it would be on my foot. And you'll notice that I'm about right here. Um, it, there's a leg that's going to be there. If it goes much t longer, it won't pull on, which is what I want. Um, this is the length of the toe, the heel. I could go a few more rounds if I was being really picky, if I want it nice and more um, snug or a little bit roomier rather, this is snug as it is. However, if I look at this, I did a little bit of a, a math project last night, and I figured out that basically the heel is going to be somewhere between 25 or a quarter of the size or a third of the size. So say we move this to here, the heel will be at least, um, it's not quite a third more. If this is two thirds, by folding it in half, then it will be a, a little bit less than another third for that heel, for the for the proportions I've given for this particular sock. So if you like to go by guess and by gosh, or by good rules of thumb, that will work. I also have another um, mannequin. Oh, well, it just took a little dive on the floor, but here's my mannequin that is a little bit too big for my foot. I, as I said, I wear a small, I, I wear a size six foot. But again, uh, this should go a little bit higher so that it's where you can't pull it on. And again, you can see that about a third, a little bit more than a third there right now. So that's about where you want to be before you place your heel. And we'll put that down where it won't fall and distract us for the rest of the video. Now what we've got here is we have ended at the beginning of the round by, this is the bottom and that's where each round starts and stops while we're going in the round. But the pattern is now asking you to go three quarters of, the si of, of, a, of a round so that you end up on the side where we can now place a heel. So what I'm going to do now, doesn't matter how you hold your yarn or what needles you're using, but we're going to go three quarters of a round to get to that side. And I am, 
kind of in the the nitty version that I downloaded as a PDF, which they they have this wonderful feature where you can get a, a P PDF of their patterns now. Um, it's right to the to the right hand side of a nice big picture of two socks. The socks are pa pointing right. And we're just going to, again, when we get to this marker, I'll just move it over as if I'm not using, uh, as, as it, so that it's not in the way of my yarn. And we're going to go back to that place. At, at the point where we get to that next side, we need to put in what we call waste yarn. And waste yarn is a yarn that you can see really clearly when you come back to it later so that you can actually pull it out at a later time. Often you'll use a smooth yarn like a cotton or something with uh, bamboo or something in it, something shiny, um, or even something that's mostly nylon, something like that. In this case, what I'm going to use is just the contrast color that I'm not using right now that's really easy to see. And all I'm going to do is leave this, this working yarn right over here to the right-hand side and just let it flop there and wait for me in a minute. I'm going to leave a nice long end here so that I so that it won't pull out accidentally later. And I am going to now knit the stitches that are just at the bottom of the foot. Remember I said that, that this marker right here on my particular foot is the bottom and the center of the bottom of the foot. So it doesn't, again, doesn't matter if you use your right hand or left hand. I'm a little bit quicker my own self when I use my little left hand here, although I knit either way. I've done some knitting with the yarn around my neck too, which is kind of a wonderful way to handle several colors, which, which is what they do in the Andes. Okay. Now we have done the bottom of the foot. We have done just the stitches on the bottom of where you are, and that's where the heel is going to come out later. So we have now made our, uh, our waist yarn, and you can cut that off, or I'm gonna see if I can break this yarn. Sometimes, sometimes you can break a 100% wool yarn with your hands. And then I will go back. I'm going to pretend this yarn is really not there at all. I'm going to leave these ends out so I can see where they are. But now I'm going to go back and just knit where I was going to knit ahead of time. Um, and I'm just going to knit right on top of that yarn that's the odd color. And this will stay. But the waist yarn later, we're going to take it out after we uh, secure the stitches for a heel. And so we're just going to knit right along top and keep on going with the pattern. Yep, and I just dropped a stitch until I'm ready to uh, actually then I can go all the way to the top and I can do the 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 paper um, the color work for another band that's similar to this that's right up above and uh, I'm going to come back after that and show you how I finish off the top row uh, when I'm binding off and how I finish that off in a nice, smooth, lovely way. So I will have a little, a little video on finishing the, the top of the leg. So that's where we are. And then you're just going to keep on going and pretend this yarn isn't really there. When you come, come around, it does look like something's wrong because it is really loosened and fussy right there. But don't worry about that. It will. We're taking this out anyway, so you didn't do anything wrong if it looks funny on the edges. And just keep on going and follow that pattern. You're going to do several rounds of this, and then you're going to do some color work, which looks like this, only kind of upside down. And then you're going to do a couple rounds of, of basically what's garter stitch in the round, which is knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, I'm sorry, knit a round purl around several times and then we will bind off together. So I will meet you when we get there and then uh, after that's all done then we're going to make ourselves a crystal heel which is pretty exciting. Thank you for joining me. I'm really glad you're here. Again this is Lynn H from colorjoy.com. I appreciate your time. Thank you.